glance, this might look like a hick town. But make no mistake, you're looking at one of the country's most progressive industrial communities. Maybe you folks might like to meet a few of our most successful business tycoons. Grocer, barber, merchant, the cobbler, and Mr. Moneybags himself, the stalwart guardian of our hard-earned savings. Meet Pop Webfoot, who owns our oldest corporation. Now, Pop had everything his way until Mr. Redcomb, our most successful manufacturer, opened up a new business right across the street. These two guys are always fighting for the favors of that most desirable, sought-after female, sometimes known as Mrs. Consumer. Pop Webfoot is my boss, the industrious-looking fellow in the corner. <laughs> That's me. Well, Pop's a nice guy, but kind of old-fashioned in his way of doing business. Across the street, though, that sharpshooter Redcomb really uses his wits to glom on to our customers. <laughs> However, Mrs. Consumer, who's usually loyal to her old friends, drops in to take a look at one of our special bargains. My, my, Mr. Webfoot, you certainly have the most exciting merchandise. This little toaster is really a humdinger. Use only the best materials. And hire only the best help. Why, it's amazing. So reasonably priced, too. Only 50 cents. It's impossible to buy such a quality toaster for less than... You're welcome to Redcomb's home of better bargains. You see our revolutionary new model? Toast four slices, both sides, only 50 cents. Yes, I said only 50 cents. Why, Mr. Redcomb, it's so much nicer than Mr. Webfoot's. And for the same price, too. How can you do it? Very simple, my dear madam. Step this way, if you will, please. <clears throat> the secret of my success is simply that I plow back some of my profits into new tools of production, which enables my workmen, by more efficient methods, to produce more and better toasters. This allows me to sell them at the same price as my competitor, a certain little skinflint who is too tight to reinvest his profits as I do. Oh, you, you must be getting richer and richer every day. Naturally, madam, I'm in business to make all the money I can for myself. But any successful businessman knows he has to plow some of his profits back to improve his product. Or some hard-hitting competitor will drive him to the wall. Oh, I think big business is just too fascinating. Well, the boss stuck his bill into somebody else's business and learned what to do with his profits. He discovered that in order to beat Redcomb's time with a certain bargain-hunting female, he had to spend his profits on research to develop machines and tools to turn out a new and better toaster. Uh, hey, boss, uh, I think I got it. This time, it's gonna be a little beauty. A little beauty. All my profits turned into junk. Guess we need a new knuckle bolt. Knuckle bolt. Knucklehead, at this rate, I'll go bankrupt. Gotta spend profits to make profits, boss. Gotta spend profits to make profits. Oh, how I hate you, you picky, demanding, unreasonable, hard to please, price and quality conscious, uh, desirable, attractive, wonderful necessity to business. Oh, how I love you. We're scraping the bottom of the barrel. Maybe we ought to quit. But Pop wasn't finished yet. 
He went to work to raise some new capital to build better machinery and expand the business. Of course, anybody knows banks gladly loan money, providing the business promises a profit, and uh, providing your collateral is as good as gold. You see, when a business promises a profit, some people invest their savings in preferred stock. Other folks buy common stock. Why, it's a cinch to raise capital to expand business if you can convince investors that there'll be profits to pay dividends cash on the barrel head. Well, Pop finally made it. The factory expanded and made a lot more jobs for everybody. Those new machines licked the bugs in the toasters, and increased production brought the boss higher sales and higher profits. <laughs> and I got a raise. Since I'm a top man, and the boss decided to fix up the joint to keep me happy. And the machines bought with the new capital turned out enough stuff to cut down my working hours. Finally, Pop Webfoot had a product that knocked Mrs. Consumer for a loop. It's beautiful. Allow me to demonstrate. Uh, by simply placing the loaf of bread against the revolving blade, it is sliced to the desired thickness. The treadmill conveys the slice to the revolutionary heating element, where it is toasted to a tender golden brown. The dust-free approved room spreads the melted golden butter, and the patented ejector projects the delectable slice onto the lady's plate. All with an absolute minimum of fuss and bother. Why, Mr. Webfoot, your little beauty is a must for every housewife. I want one now. Wrap it up. At last, she's mine. Oh, mine! Now, ladies, grab your pocketbooks. It's sensational. The new miracle product, Redcomb Super Duper Potato Peeler. And with the simple attachments that come with it, Redcomb's Miracle Potato Peeler is convertible to a hairdryer, foot warmer, wall heater, pants presser, and countless other household necessities. There she goes again. There's one gal who knows what she wants. Just take a look at her kitchen. All the latest gadgets. How did they get there? Profits put them there. Yep. Profits and business make it possible for every consumer in the country to have more and better goods at lower costs. I guess most everyone knows our Mrs. Consumer is pretty lucky. Especially when she happens to have such an intelligent, industrious family man for a husband.